There's something about power that just attracts people to a story. Wealth, fame, incredible strength, genius level intellect, we are fascinated by watching people who have us woefully outclassed in any given category. We look up to strong, powerful characters to do and achieve things we could only dream of. I mean, look at that monster right there. You think you could fight that? Nope. But we can create characters given these Herculean tasks, and through that we can experience the thrill of a heated battle between Titan and he's dead. He's dead. You alright? Nah, he's dead. I've had a rocky relationship with overpowered characters. On one hand, they're fucking awesome. Their strength, ability, and sheer badassery can create unforgettable moments in the best fictional stories. But more often than not, when they stand alone, there's not much substance there. Because sure, you might be invulnerable to almost everything in the universe, but why should I care about you? It's gonna take a little more than muscles and a can-do attitude to win me over. I'm looking at you, Superman! Oh. That ain't Superman, that's Clark Kent. <laughs> But for the longest time, I assumed that making OP characters was just lazy storytelling. Because what's the point of setting up obstacles and challenges for a character who can just power their way out of any situation? But I'm here to tell you that I was wrong. And stupid. And wrong. Because a well-written, overpowered character might be exactly what certain stories need, anime, comics, TV shows, whatever, to become great. So the simplest and easiest ways I've seen OP characters implemented in stories is through a side character. Someone who may not get as much of the spotlight as our main protagonist, but when they do, it can be hard for them to give it back. Because main character or not, these guys put on a hell of a show. And while yes, the action and the adrenaline they can inject into a scene can be extremely entertaining, they can fail to be engaging in ways that keep them from feeling like effective characters. You're talking about Goku, right? Uh, no. I know you're talking about Goku! I actually like Dragon Ball. Goku beats Superman, One Punch Man, Mega Man, and my mailman! You're just a hater! Alright, let's just check that off. But characters like Jiren. And unless anything changes in Wano, Kaido from One Piece. Strong characters that exist only for strength's sake. And after a while, it can get a little boring to watch, because the only purpose they serve is as an obstacle for the protagonist to surpass. They don't change the main characters in any meaningful way, they literally just exist to make them punch harder. In an ideal world, you want your OP side characters to 1. Affect all the characters around them, and 2. Have an important but not static role in the plot, and then you control us how much ass they kick. Koro Sensei from Assassination Classroom is a great OP character because of his versatility. He's practically unkillable in any given situation, but he has such a flexible role in the story. His assassination is the main goal of every other character in the show, which means he has a lasting effect on everyone around him, but it's his ability to connect with everyone around him in wildly different ways that keep him from being static and make him an interesting character to watch. That's why I think one of the best OP side characters I've seen so far is Gojo Satoru from Jujutsu Kaisen. Not only does he have that immediate charm and charisma that can hook you, but he really exists at the center of the Jujutsu Kaisen world. He's a mentor, a fighter, a class clown, and a great obstacle all rolled into one. And while he has his own agenda, it's the way every other character interacts with him that keeps him engaging. Like his relationship with the villains. His OP powers and abilities make him the main challenge to the curses in the show. When they come up with a plan, they have to constantly account for and work around Gojo's incredible power in ways that make the whole cast get involved one way or another. It's refreshing, and it shakes up the whole plot from your typical shonen anime, because instead of heroes trying to work around an overpowered villain, it's the villains constantly trying to deal with an overpowered hero. But whatever side of the coin they lie on morally, it's important for an overpowered character, and any character really, to be dynamic. Because if they're only really effective in one specific situation, then they become flat characters. But what about main characters, the MCs, the stars of the show? Well, that can get a little more confusing. These guys aren't just a part of the story, the story is directly challenging them. And how can a story challenge someone who can beat anyone in one punch or have a million lives? Well, we can arbitrarily create a contrived weakness for these characters and get us to think they're in danger when reality is a cheap and lazy way to add stakes to your story. 
Hear that, Superman, you dumb piece of shit? Oh. God damn it, where'd he go? <laughs> but believe it or not, it's all in the cerebral. The brains of your character. What makes him tick? If you want your main character to be an overpowered ass kicking machine, then you have to think more about how they think. Just because someone has practically no physical weaknesses doesn't mean they're free from mental weaknesses. Some hurts don't show on the outside. Look at One Punch Man. This is a dude who has reached the peak of superhuman ability. One Punch Man. He can literally kill anyone with a little love tap to the forehead. But he's got a serious motivation problem. He's got no one to fight now. Life is suddenly more boring than it's ever been. Adding emotional dilemmas to seemingly invulnerable characters can make them more relatable than you'd think. You're telling me there's this all-powerful being, an inhuman monster of a fighter, but he's a kid who can't pick up chicks? I, I, I can't pick up chicks either! Come on, come on, ow, 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 don't bite, don't bite. But there's something about subverting that facade of the unbeatable foe and showing us that an insane bloodthirsty vampire with seemingly endless amounts of lives, hey, he can cry too. When you form the conflicts and stakes of an overpowered character around their deep-seated flaws and emotions, it creates more tangible drama. It feels more real than waving a green rock around and giving some dude tights food poisoning. But that's because an overpowered character is not the same thing as a perfect character. And that's a problem I see more and more people failing to recognize. Hell, it's a problem I couldn't even recognize for a while. The perfect character is an archetype that more often than not fails to hold any real ground with an audience. Because not only can they win any fight that comes their way, but they are virtually infallible, physically and emotionally. And when you have a character that simply cannot do any wrong, that somehow makes it through every obstacle and challenging situation without so much as a scratch, then it's boring. A person without flaws, someone who's an expert in every category imaginable, isn't interesting to watch. Let's say fucking aliens were gonna invade Earth and start speaking in some Glibnorb language and everyone's scared because holy shit, there's fucking aliens, what are we gonna do? And then some dude rolls up and goes, Glibnabdulba, kabadaba, and they j just fucking uh, dip. Everyone's like, holy shit, what'd you do? And he's like, oh, I speak Glibnorb. Well, where the hell did you learn that? I don't know. There's no real conflict there, and without conflict, a character can't grow properly. There's no change. A perfect character ends up coming out just as perfect as they were before. They come off as wish fulfillment, and that's just a little too dull for my tastes. You need to balance out their strengths and weaknesses so that when they come across a situation that doesn't fit their strengths, we're more intrigued by what they're going to do next. Because even if your OB character is the best at what they do, there should always be someone better than your character in another area. A place where they're outclassed. Marowim from Hunter x Hunter is a perfect example of this. Born as the gifted prince of a race of mass murderers, Marowim feels as though his race, status, talent, ability, and intellect give him the right to rule over everything. On paper, he looks like a character without any flaws, running around, killing whoever comes his way, gathering around champions of games all around the world just to prove he's better than them. You know, typical, I'm better than you, you're stupid, deal with it, character. But eventually, he meets someone he can't beat. Komugi. She's leagues better than him in a game of Gungi, Hunter's version of Korean chess, and it infuriates him. He relentlessly challenges her, and through their interactions, he starts to recognize flaws within himself, and grows. And he does all this while soloing basically the most powerful hunter in the show, and making it look easy. This is an overpowered villain that manages to have the strength and the depth of character to back it up. His growth is consistently interesting to watch, and is way more satisfying than if he was created as some one-note evil OP overlord. Ooh, so scary. <laughs> well guys, it's looking like it's about that time. If there's one thing you should try to think about when watching overpowered characters, or characters in general, it's how well they contribute to the story being told. Because if they're not adding anything, if they aren't necessary and dynamic parts of the story, then chances are, they aren't doing what they should be to intrigue and entertain you, the viewer. And that's what matters, right? I don't want to keep watching people I don't find interesting, then it just feels like a waste of time. I could be playing video games or making a club sandwich, I don't know. But thanks for watching. 
bless your little wee barts. And I'll see you in the next video. Oh my god, it's Sub Punch Man! <laughs> it is I, Sub Punch Man. Champion of the mighty, shepherd of the weak. Did I mention I also donate to charity? <laughs> we love you so much, Now, now, kids. Don't love me. Love this stupid fucking YouTuber I know nothing about. Because he paid me. And money sure does speak. <laughs> so subscribe to the void. Punch that sub button. Turn those bell notifications on. Give me more money. <laughs> but sub punch man? What if I don't subscribe to the void? Don't break your fucking neck.